All right, so let's talk about something called Le Chatelier's Principle. So what Le Chatelier's Principle is, is it is a way for us to predict which way a reaction, an equilibrium is going to shift if that equilibrium is disturbed by a change that we call a stress. So we'll say when a system is in equilibrium, a system just means a reaction. When a system is in equilibrium and that equilibrium is disturbed by a change, And we call that change a stress. And there are four different types of stresses that we're going to talk about. And what Le Chatelier's principle does is it allows us to predict the direction, the reaction will proceed to re-establish equilibrium. So we're at equilibrium and then a stress changes the equilibrium somehow and then what way is the reaction going to shift to re-establish equilibrium. So let's talk about what these four changes or stresses are. So there's four. The first one is temperature. So if you have a reaction that is at equilibrium and you change the temperature, that is gonna shift the equilibrium. The next type of stress that will change in equilibrium is pressure. We will mostly be talking about equilibrium in respect to gases. So the way that you would change the pressure would be you would change the size of the container, change the volume. Remember, volume and pressure are inversely related. The smaller the volume of a container, the greater the pressure. Or the greater the volume of a container, the, the lower the pressure. So changing the pressure of a chemical reaction can shift the equilibrium. The next thing is concentration. Changing the concentration of the things in the reaction. Um, products and reactants and chemical reactions are also often called species. So changing the concentration of the species in the chemical reaction will shift the equilibrium. And the fourth thing that is considered a stress to a chemical reaction at equilibrium is the addition of a catalyst. So we're gonna go through each of these four stresses and see how Le Chatelier's principle allows us to predict the way that this reaction is going to re-establish equilibrium. So we're at equilibrium, some stress changes things, and then which way does the reaction move to re-establish equilibrium? So that's what Le Chatelier's principle is talking about. So I think we're gonna start at the bottom first because it's the easiest. So the addition of a catalyst. The addition of a catalyst increases both the forward and the reverse rates of the reaction. It increases them both equally. So when you add a catalyst to a chemical reaction, it increases the rate of the chemical reaction. So it increases the forward rate at the same amount that it increases the reverse rate 
the vert reverse rate. So this is kind of a trick question because even though a catalyst is a stress, it does not cause any shift in the chemical equilibrium. So that's an easy one because there's no shift when we add a catalyst because even though the reaction is happening faster, the forward rate and the reverse rate are increasing at the same magnitude. So now let's go back to the, well, maybe we'll do this from the bottom up. Now let's look at concentration. <clears throat> so changing the concentration of the reactants or the products in a chemical reaction are going to cause the chemical reaction the equilibrium of that chemical reaction to shift to reestablish equilibrium. So concentration so let's say if here are the different scenarios let's say we increase the concentration of a reactant if we increase the concentration of the reactants, that is gonna shift the equilibrium to the products because now we have more reactants that we can use to form products. So I'm just gonna use the right and left arrows to indicate if it's going to shift to the reactants or the products. So the arrow, the direction of the arrow is indicating the shift. So I won't use arrows over here. The next situation is that we are decreasing the concentration of a reactant. If we decrease the concentration of the reactant, now we have less reactants, the equilibrium is going to shift back to the reactants. The next scenario that we have is that we could increase the concentration of a product. If we increase the concentration of a product, we have more products than we had at equilibrium. To reestablish equilibrium, we're gonna shift the equilibrium back towards the reactants to reestablish that equilibrium. And then the last scenario is if we decrease the concentration of the products. Decreasing the concentration of the products will mean that we would shift the equilibrium towards the products to reestablish equilibrium. We're gonna use some specific examples to provide some clarity here. Okay, next let's look at pressure. So we did say that pressure Again, we're going to be mostly talking about gases in these examples. So there's two things that you can do. You can either increase the pressure or you can decrease the pressure. Well, the way that we're going to be increasing or decreasing pressure is by changing the volume of the container that this reaction is happening in. So if we were to increase the pressure of a chemical reaction, we would be reducing the size of the container. If you decrease the size of the container, also decrease the volume of the container, that's going to increase the pressure. If you decrease the pressure, that's the same thing as saying increasing the size of the container. Because remember, if we make the size of the container bigger, increase the volume, that will decrease the pressure. So the rule for this is that if you increase the pressure, there's more pressure inside this reaction that means that this reaction will favor the side of the arrows that has the fewest number of moles of gas. So you're just gonna look at the chemical reaction, add up the number of moles of gas on the reactant side, add up the number of moles of gas on the product side. If you increase the pressure, 
there's more pressure in this container now, you've reduced the size of the container, the reaction will favor the side that has the fewest number of moles of gas. The opposite is true if you decrease the pressure. If you decrease the pressure, now you've increased the size of the volume, the increased the volume of the container. The um, equilibrium is going to be reestablished by favoring the side of the reaction that has the most highest number of moles of gas. So this is a case-by-case -case situation. It's not like over here, if you increase something, it favors the right or the left every time. This depends on how many moles of gas. So not the number of total moles. So if you have solids or liquids and or an aqueous solution and you have a heterogeneous equilibrium, you're only looking at the number of moles of gas to determine which way this equilibrium is going to shift. So the last stress is temperature. So let's talk about temperature and I'm gonna do that right up here. So the first thing to do when you're talking about temperature is you need to identify the reaction as being endothermic. Remember, endothermic means delta H is a positive number or exothermic. Exothermic means delta H is a negative number. So when you do this, then you can just kind of apply what we know about concentration. So endothermic reactions delta H is positive. If you have an endothermic reaction and delta H is positive, this is the same thing as saying heat is a reactant. Heat is gonna be found on the left-hand side of the equation if you were putting heat into the equation because you need heat for this reaction to happen. So that's endothermic. Exothermic reactions where delta H is negative, heat is a product. because heat is produced in an exothermic reaction. So now, the first thing you need to do is you'll either be told in the equation if it's endothermic or exothermic, or you'll be given the enthalpy change, the delta H as being a positive number or a negative number. And then you'll see, is the temperature increasing or decreasing? And then it's the same logic that's applied to concentration. So for example, if you have an endothermic reaction, heat is a reactant. So if you increase the temperature, would be the same thing as saying you're increasing the concentration of a reactant. So increasing the temperature is gonna shift the equilibrium to the products. If you decrease the temperature, then you would shift the equilibrium back towards the reactants. The opposite is true for an exothermic reaction where heat is essentially a product. So if you increase the temperature, remember temperature is just a measurement of heat. If you increase the temperature of an exothermic reaction, that would shift the equilibrium to the reactants. And if you decrease the temperature of an exothermic reaction, that would shift the equilibrium towards the products. So I'll post another video doing an example of all of this. This is kind of the framework, and then we'll do some examples to show uh, how this all is applied. But again, Le Chatelier's principle is used to determine how a system, a system at equilibrium is going to respond to a stress, how it's going to respond to reestablish equilibrium.